Anyone who has looked up Tesla on the internet will have come across this quote. Throughout space, there is energy. Is this energy static or kinetic? If static, our hopes are in vain. If kinetic, and this we know it is for certain, then it is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheelwork of nature. This is absolutely true, in my opinion. The electric universe people believe that electricity plays a huge role in cosmology. This too is undeniably true. When we see clouds of lit up plasma, that is evidence of electricity. So we know it is there. We also know that electric forces are many orders of magnitude larger than gravitational ones. Therefore, its role in cosmology is proven. The EU have developed a model of how stars are like beads on electric strings. Through an entirely different line of reasoning, I had come to the same conclusion. I had developed a theory of consciousness and reality. One of the conclusions of this theory is that our brain should look similar to the cosmos the stars being the neurons. These stars must communicate, just like our neurons, and electric currents are the most likely medium through which this could happen. So, given the fact that we are living inside this huge electric machine, I would say that it is merely an engineering challenge to draw the power that we desire directly from this machine. The above quote is from 1892, and Tesla still lived for 51 years after that. Had he worked out how to accomplish this? In this video, I will present evidence that he had, based on his own words. After his laboratory burned in 1895, Tesla developed a less direct way of explaining his work and theories. But in the 1930s, he started speaking in a bit more direct manner again. So let's start there. The first article to look at is from his birthday speech in 1931. Tesla, 75, predicts new power source. Points of interest are 1. Reference to cosmic rays from the sun. 2. Mention of the steel industry. 3. He had been working on it for 36 years, meaning it started in 1895. 4. At first, the cost may be found too high. 5. An apparent contradiction about being constant or intermittent. 6. His theories were confirmed at Colorado Springs. There are several other articles, but most do not add anything to this list. Then, there is this one from December 1931 our future motive power that tells a story that Tesla repeats four times in various places. We will get to this later. For now, let's call it point seven. Later on his birthday in 1932, this article appears. Tesla cosmic ray motor may transmit power round Earth. Once you have learned how to read Tesla, this article tells a lot. We'll keep this one for an intermezzo after point six. And finally, on his birthday in 1933, he again speaks of this new energy source but does not add anything new. At this point, we already have an answer to our initial question. Tesla had found a new, untapped source of green energy. But we also have a number of clues to dig a little bit deeper. So, let's see where that will lead us. Let's start with cosmic rays from the sun. Some background information can be found in his article of October 13, 1932. The eternal source of energy of the universe, origin and intensity of cosmic rays. From the electrical charge and size of the Earth, Tesla had calculated that its electric potential must be about 1 billion volt, negative. Then from the ratio of the distance from Earth to the Sun over the radius of the Sun, Tesla calculated that the potential of the sun must be about 215 billion volt, positive. Tesla found that conductors charged to high potentials in a vacuum radiate, what he called primary cosmic rays. These rays consist of minute charged particles, and the higher the potential of their source, the more penetrative these rays are. When these rays interact with matter, they produce what Tesla called secondary cosmic rays which are electromagnetic radiations. This, by the way, 
is Tesla's explanation and prediction of what we today know as cosmic background radiation. Tesla wrote two patents, method and apparatus for the utilization of radiant energy. Many believe that this describes the method of tapping Tesla's new energy source. But if you read it carefully, it states that using this method, a feeble current can be generated. Obviously, we cannot run our modern world on this feeble current. In my opinion, this patent is not meant, as usual, to make money of, but instead to pass on valuable information to future researchers. It describes how the primary cosmic rays of the sun charge the earth and possibly cause lightning here on earth. Now, let's go to our second clue, the steel industry. Where have we seen that before? In his article, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy of June 1900. Increasing human energy could refer to providing a new energy source for us. This article is the prime example of what I have called the Tesla Code. Tesla does not talk in direct terms here, as I mentioned earlier. He uses his words to paint a picture, a kind of analogy of the actual message and the reader has to interpret that picture. This may sound controversial in the beginning, but please hear me out. Give this idea a chance, and you will be blown away by what you'll discover. Tesla goes to quite some length to describe a new production method for iron. Here are some interesting quotes. A certain kind of sand ore existing in abundance in the region of the Great Lakes. Studying this article will eventually reveal that iron here is a symbol for electricity. This sand ore is a source for electricity and what he refers to is obviously the power plant at the Niagara Falls. The production of iron from sand ores by a process of magnetic separation is highly commendable in principle. Electricity is mostly generated using magnetism. An electrolytic cold process, which would make it possible to extract iron cheaply. Using electricity to extract iron, in other words, using electricity to extract more electricity. Extract it from where, you may ask. Well, reading the entire article, you will find this piece of code. Burning atmospheric nitrogen. Nitrogen is present in the air, but it is very inert. We have to use electricity to extract it from the air and create compounds with which we can fertilize the earth so that plants can grow. Now replace nitrogen here with electricity. This then becomes, we have to use electricity to harvest electricity from our atmosphere and distribute it through the earth so that industries can grow. The third clue then. What research was Tesla doing in 1895? Or what research did he start on in that year? We can quickly find the answer in the above article. Tesla was working on a self-acting engine and we can be more specific. This engine consisted of five elements, the first was an oscillator, the second a compressor, and the third element would make it a refrigerating machine. This would then create a cold sink that would draw in heat from the environment. It was this third part that Tesla was starting on in 1895. Looking through his notes and articles we must conclude that, apparently, this involved X-rays and cosmic rays. Interestingly, if we read Tesla's autobiography, we find that he was working on his magnifying transmitter during these years. So, magnifying transmitter is self-acting engine. An image is appearing, isn't it? Let's go to point four, about the high initial costs. If you know anything about Nikola Tesla, this would immediately ring a Wardenclyffe bell. At Wardenclyffe, Tesla wanted to build his magnifying transmitter, but it failed because of lack of funds. Now this then links back to Colorado Springs and distribution of electricity through the earth. Point five now may not be immediately obvious. We must read it carefully. We can do it now, and we are doing it to a certain extent. But the tremendous handicap is found in the periodic character of this kind of energy supply. Many attempts have been made in this direction, but invariably it was found that the power is too expensive. I think this is clearly referring to lightning as an energy source. The ways we have tried to tap this energy all run into problems because it comes in very short, very powerful pulses. Tesla is doing it in a much more controlled manner. One could say that he gets the energy before it turns into lightning, 
According to Tesla, the solar radiation is the ultimate source of this energy. This supply is constant, but it turns into periodic lightning strikes. I would like to add that I have read the Feynman lectures on this subject and there appears to be a huge oversight. Feynman says that the Earth and ionosphere form a capacitor that is charged to some 400,000 volts. This capacitor is leaking almost 1,800 amperes worldwide. But lightning keeps this capacitor charged. It sure looks that way, I have to admit. But this would violate the laws of thermodynamics if there wasn't some outside source of energy. Obviously, the only possible source here is the sun. But this is completely left out of his lecture. Had he only mentioned this, it would have added credibility to Tesla's theories. But it looks as if modern scientists would do anything to avoid that. Now we come to point six, Colorado Springs. We already found this link through Tesla's magnifying transmitter. The importance here is that Tesla states that he had found evidence here that his method would work. I would like to add one more point of interest here. In March 1904, an article appeared, The Transmission of Electrical Energy Without Wires. In this article, Tesla wrote that one of the reasons that he chose this place for his research is that it was famous for the natural displays of electric force, in other words, lightning. And he talks a bit about how the sun causes this. Before moving on, let me get a diagram of a magnifying transmitter and add in element one, the oscillator, element two, the compressor, element three, the expansion nozzle. These create the cold sink of the self-acting engine. Now read this article of his 1932 birthday, Tesla Cosmic Ray Motor may transmit power round Earth. I have harnessed the cosmic rays and caused them to operate a motive device. Confirming what we already had found, now how does it work? I will tell you in the most general way. The cosmic ray ionizes the air, setting free many charges, ions and electrons. These charges are captured in a condenser, which is made to discharge through the circuit of the motor. And we know that. I have hopes of building my motor on a large scale, but circumstances have not been favorable to carrying out my plan. Okay, the final point then. I have to remind you that Tesla uses his words to paint a picture. It should not be taken literally. The sun raises the water to a height where it remains in a state of delicate suspension until a disturbance of relatively insignificant energy causes condensation at a place where the balance is most easily disturbed. The action, once started, spreads like a conflagration for a vacuum is formed and the air rushing in, being cooled by expansion, enhances further condensation in the surrounding masses of the cloud. Well, I'm sure you'll get this picture now. And this is what gives me the energy to stay focused on this research for so many years, the promise of a new source of sustainable energy. Wouldn't that be great? And you could be involved. <laughs>